Hi, my name is Nikina Gossivig, and I am a data visualization librarian at the University of Washington. Before we begin this section of the series, I'd like to first acknowledge where I'm joining from today. I acknowledge the Coast Salish peoples of these lands that touch the shared waters of all whose ancestors resided here since time immemorial and reside and thrive here still. Of course, these words mean little without any action. Um, while I am not an expert in land repatriation and I'm still learning more about how to help move that needle, as someone who often works with data and works often in the context of the digital realm, I commit to taking action in any work that I do to try to reverse any practices that attempt to erase indigenous peoples from data and information structures. So I'm going to move on to this module now, which is about designing for accessibility from the beginning of the visualization process. I just wanna note that you can find the links in these slides that accompany this video. It is always easier to design for accessibility from the beginning rather than try to retroactively change a visualization to be more accessible. Accessibility is also an ethical issue. Does the visualization empower the audience? Is the information easily available to all rather than only available to some? Um, related content on this topic is available in the Ethics and Data Visualization module from this series. You may have heard of 508 compliance, which is just one of many rules around web accessibility. Some key ways to make a visualization accessible and be in compliance is to add alternative text to graphics, which explains what is being displayed in the graphic, use accessible and easy to read fonts, provide the raw data for reference in the table, use built-in style settings such as heading levels, and make sure that there is enough high contrast or high enough contrast in colors so that colors and text on the visualization are readable. It is also important to design for color vision deficiency. So looking at this example on the left, when creating line charts, make sure that the lines are distinguishable by both color and point shape. On the right, this screenshot of a color palette shows how different types of color vision deficiency can really make an impact on what the reader of a data visualization sees. When writing alternative text or alt text, be sure to make it descriptive. Cover the type of chart, the type of data, and why that data is being included in the chart. Be sure to include a link to the data source somewhere in the text of the visualization. While this might seem a bit formulaic, it covers the key parts of a chart that need to be communicated to have the basic parts of it understood. While we won't get into these here, there are also other ways of visualizing that do not rely on sight. For example, sonification converts graphics to sound and is one way that charts and trends and data can be communicated. Braille can also be another method of sharing visualizations, along with physicalization, which is essentially uh, physical data representations. While none of these are perfect approaches, they provide ways to think about data visualization outside of just some 2D charts. These are a few resources to help when designing for accessibility, including some web accessibility requirements, a couple of color contrast checkers, and a few resources for designing for accessibility using different tools. This video is part of a series of lectures recorded to teach about basic data visualization concepts. It was designed by members of the Visualizing the Future Symposia project and was made possible in part by a national forum grant from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. This content is designed to be used freely. See the video description for more information about this lecture series and the Visualizing the Future Symposia project.